It's too bad that the road is flat. I wish there was some sort of elevation I could do. I know. What if I make an awesome looking gatehouse that people can go up on and shoot from? <laughs> Hi good folks, my name is Leif, and I want to welcome you to my channel called Devs and Dice. Today I'm going to show you how I made this amazing looking gatehouse for my Mordheim board. I really like my old Mordheim board, but I felt I was missing some elevated positions right over my road. I'm also going to be sharing some new posters that I made and of course the plans for this build for anyone to use if they should wish so free gratis. Let's get cracking. So I made a couple of plans which I printed out and unfortunately this building is so big I actually had to use two printer papers in order to cover it. But I've shared this in the description. Now as per usual I'm going to take a glue stick and just get that plan glued into a piece of 5mm foam core. Now once it's on there I get to start thinking about what to cut out and so on. I usually start with the simple ones, the, the windows, the, the edges, and then I cut out that middle section that will be a kind of a hinge to the different parts. Now, when it came to bases, this one is actually a little bit interesting because we're not working with one base, we're working with two separate bases. Now, as per usual, I'm just going to cut out and bevel some of the edges and the opening for the door. This gets hot glued in quite easily with my low temperature hot glue gun. And I actually think that this sort of process or workflow is super effective. The main timbers, I like to use 8mm balsa wood dowels and I scratch these up to a nice timber texture using a steel wire brush and then I hot glue them in to the corners where more larger timbers supposedly would exist. Now this one that goes across is actually a little bit interesting because that's really the first piece that's going to bind the two separate pieces together and hopefully give it some stability. The edges of a roof gets the same treatment and on the facing side of the front I actually chose a much thinner piece but the same dimensions. I do some support beams and those will have some cross supports just to prepare the base for the floor. As per usual, I'm going to use my Lego windows, and as you can see, I've ordered, uh, once upon a time, I think I ordered around 250 of those, because this is just too simple and it's cheap, so I just glue them in using some white glue. Most of the wooden pieces I will be using white glue, because I find that it really adheres quite well and is quite durable. So here I'm just laying in the first layer of flooring. And as I'm doing that, I might as well start adding in some of those coffee stir sticks as decorations and indications of different floors. Here's a little special one. Since this is so wide, I actually needed some additional beams to hold up the roof. I actually used super glue first, but then I did actually off camera add some white glue so that the wood will adhere to the main wooden beam much easier. Now, once I have these measurements, adding coffee stir sticks there as a roof substructure is a small thing. Another thing I wanted to explore again was using uh, bricks to clad the bottom of one of the two towers. The other one I went with coffee stir sticks and gave it a timbered look. And once the timber had adhered it was a simple thing to cut it to shape. And I think, if you don't mind me saying it, this looks pretty darn good. Here I'm now working on the inside flooring and essentially what I'm doing is I'm using coffee stir sticks to make sure that I have the same line and then I just use some 5mm balsa dowels to get a little bit of support beams. 
And while that is drying, I'm gonna add various coffee stir sticks here and there, uh, some on the actual panels on the front, which you should go as decorative as you want. As you can see here, I went very decorative, I think, and I like this style of that. And I don't know, it just gives it that feeling of, okay, somebody has actually lived here and once upon a time they, they did care about their home and what it looked like and so on. Now, by far the most painful bit is this one. And it, of course, is bricking the inside of that little part of the building. Um, as you can see, I actually am cutting my bricks in half. And the only full bricks I'm using is at the edge, just to sort of give it a illusion that it looks like it's three layers of bricks. Now, when it came to shingles, I'm going to use my tried and tested method where I'm using essentially thicker uh, paper, packaging paper, which I sort of bend because I feel like wood will usually sort of warp and such. And I think it actually looks quite nice. I'm going to use some sand texture gel, which is something I uh, have used in all of my buildings. And I'm going to use this as the stucco. And I feel it does a very good job and it's very easy to work with. Here, I'm just adding a little bit of ruin, some bricks and a little bit of sand just to give uh, some texture and uh, interesting sort of shapes. This was all primed up, and after I finished a prime of black, I come in with some ink and zenitholit. As per usual, I'm also going to use some burnt umber transparent ink to cover everything. Here I'm using the same colors I usually use when it comes to my panels, which is a light brown and a mix of, I think it's called dark beige, the highlight color essentially some sort of combination of cream colors is what you're you want now for the middle part i decided to go with a little bit more old red uh, and then highlight with a proper red i use a little bit of dark sea blue for my roofing some dark gray for the bricks and then just dry brush that up with the logical color. And then the entire thing I'm actually going to dry brush using the same dark beige, which is something I have done in the past. Some spackle is used on the bricks to give it a nice sort of mortar look. And the window panes are primed, then painted with some lead belcher, typhus corrosion and some riser rust. As I hinted on social media, I have some new posters for people to use if they want to. And before anyone says anything, yes, I used Midjourney partly and my own Photoshop skills. But they're free to use if you want them or not. It's up to you. Some graffiti and some details with a sign and some strong tone and blood and we're done. Now I really like how this came together and as you can see there's actually some gates there which was something I did off camera simply just gluing in parts of the gates from the Sigmarite mausoleum. One thing that you don't know is that of course I created a second one of these. One with red and one with green in the middle. And they are a little bit different in terms of size and their looks but I like them both. Now it was time to assemble my board and pick out the terrain and see did this actually give me anything in terms of playability? Did it add to the scenery? Well, only one way to find out. The first thing that really dawned upon me is that all of a sudden the road in the middle of my board becomes much more interesting and I could have several pathways connected by modular ladders and such that actually sort of extended the influence of these gatehouses just from the road, which I thought was actually quite nice. 
Here are a multitude of examples of different sort of engagements and skirmishes that can happen that will actually involve these gatehouses. I really like them for what they are, and I am super stoked that I managed to make two of them. So we're coming up to the end of the video, and I want to thank you for watching. I also want to thank my patrons for their support. And as usual, a special shout out goes to my champion and legend level patrons. Andreas Wienberg, Bo Algren, Erik Ortman, Forby XP, Juan Marconesa, Lawrence Davis, Mad Nurse, Magnus Solberg, Light Kira 25, Leander, Niklas Svedenlind, and Oliver Granlund. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. Stay safe, everyone, and I will see you in the next video.